Someone tagged me in this video that asked how to make a timer on your screen in Rec Room. So today I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna go through and set it up for single player first. And then after that, we'll deal with the networking and make it work for multiplayer. The first thing that we need to kind of set up is activating the game HUD. Everything that you see that's on your screen, like the timer, or if you want a life bar on your screen or something like that, all of that is game HUD stuff. The first thing we're gonna get is a game HUD element constant. One of the ways that you can find this if you don't want to type stuff in, you go circuits, you're going to go player, you're going to go to UI and then HUD. So this is where all of the stuff that we're going to use kind of for the, the HUD stuff is going to be here. So let's look for a game HUD element constant. And then we're going to go ahead and configure that. And here we can name it something. I'm going to name it timer. I mean, if you have a whole bunch of other circuits and stuff, it might help you just to name it. So you name it timer and submit that. So when you want the timer, it's gonna be in the top middle. And that's like the only thing that it can be. It won't let it be a life bar or anything else. So you're gonna click this here and go to, or upper middle, sorry, upper middle. And it won't even let you change this like show value text. Like it just, it doesn't. But you can hit this set game HUD element values right here. And it'll give you a little preview of what it is that you're doing. So turn that off. Let's say just, just for example, if I wanted on a primary bar, which would be like a life bar. If I hit that, it'll show you the life bar on the bottom and whoops. So now that we have that, we have to enable that. We're going to set it up two different ways. The first way is going to be like, as soon as you enter the room that shows up on your screen. But the other way is like, if you have, I don't know, like a button or something that starts the game or somebody enters into the game or something like that, we're going to set it up that way. So first let's do like automatically when somebody comes in. For that, you need an event receiver. Go there. We're gonna configure that to player joined. They've got a whole bunch of events they've now added and it kinda, I mean, I wish they would somehow, I don't know, categorize it better. But then we wanna get a if player is local and this will make it so that it only runs on the system of the person who joined. This event receiver goes off for everybody every time somebody joins and we don't want to enable this timer for everybody when somebody joins, we want to just enable it for the player who joined at the time that they joined. And then we want to go back into our UI stuff and we want to get a set HUD element enabled. That's what we want do that. We're going to hook that up to is local. We're going to hook the target up to the timer and we're going to set this to true. So now whenever somebody joins, this will go off, limit it on the system of the person who just joined, and then it'll turn on the timer. Now, of course, right now it's not actually doing anything. It's not running. It's not, but it, but it's just displaying the fact that the timer is on and then I'll just switch this to false and run it again just to turn it off. Now that we have it set up that way, doing it for, you know, if when somebody enters the game or something is really easy, all we really need to do is just like get a button or a trigger zone, however you want to do it. And then literally just, just connect that to that. And I don't know, you might want to have it like set their position in the map or something. So after that, you do like a set position or something. Since the buttons run locally, you know, you just hit it and it activates it. So, I mean, that's, that's, it's real easy just to do that. Again, that's if you have a game where like people hit the button to enter the lobby or whatever, and then you want to start the timer. So that's kind of the first part is like activating it when the person gets in the room or when they start the game or whatever. But now we need it to actually like time we need it to actually work and one of the things that we're gonna need is something that goes off once every second so that it'll either count up or count down or however you're doing it and there's an invention that i have and i'm sure a few other people have created it called a one hertz tick that's essentially what we're gonna make of course you can get this invention it's free if you don't want to do it it does only run for the room authority so what we have in there is an event receiver set to 30 hertz so configured. They also have this new update thing, which I suppose we could use, but I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not messed with it. We're just going to use a 30 hertz. It's, it's a. I think it's like a 120 update or something instead of a 30 hertz, but but whatever. And then we want to get an integer variable, and we want to get a time get universal second. This will get you a number of seconds. It should be the same for everybody, and it will go off once every second. So what we're going to do is hook that up here, and hook this up here. Now, even though this is a 30 Hertz, which means it's sending out 30 signals per second, this variable is only changing whenever this actually changes. 
And we can use that to our advantage to make a one hertz tick. So what we're gonna do is get another event receiver and we're gonna configure that to go off whenever this integer variable changes. So we can look at the bottom here, integer variable change. And then just to show you, and now you can see it's just going off once per second. Even though this is going off 30 times per second, because this is only changing once per second, that makes this only go off once per second. So we have this going off once per second, and now we need to kind of set the initial, like, hey, we have this much time on the timer, and then we can start subtracting from it. So right now for the example, we're gonna keep it like where we hit this button to start the timer. Since this will now enable the timer, we need to set that initial time. And we're gonna do that with a set game HUD element value. So we're gonna hook that up right here. Now, luckily, Rec Room actually for this specific like timer in the middle, Rec Room kind of takes care of it for us. So what we need to do is math out what exactly the time is in the second. So we want five minutes on the timer. That's gonna be 60 times five because there's 60 seconds in a minute and that's gonna be 300. So we're just gonna type in 300 here. If I go ahead and enable this, that, you'll see it starts the timer at five minutes. So now that we have our timer set at five minutes, we want to actually start subtracting from it. So what we're gonna do now is a get HUD element value. Hook that up to our game element. We're gonna be using this thing a lot, so just make sure you have it somewhere that's like maybe easy to access. Maybe we'll put it up somewhere because we're going to be hooking a lot of different things up to it. This will get whatever the current value is for this HUD element. As of this moment, it is five minutes. And then we want to subtract from it. Every second, we want to subtract one from it. And then after we subtract the one, we want to now set this game HUD value again to whatever the new value is after the subtract. So we just clone this here. Put that in as our new value, hook this back up over here to the timer, and then we can hit this. So once I do this, you'll see it'll start counting down. And then now you have to kind of decide what do you want to happen once the timer equals zero? We just want to do an if chip. We can do it equals, but I'm gonna do less than just in case there's some sort of, I don't know, error and it ends up going below zero. So yeah, what we want to do is check if this number, which is this one. You wanna make sure that you're still getting the value of the thing. Don't do it here because that'll end up being like, as soon as it becomes zero, it becomes negative zero. So just hook it up right here. Um, and then once that is zero or less, then we want it to, I don't know, for you, whatever you want to happen to the player, once the thing equals zero, you would put it in right here, right? And then after you put in whatever it is that you want, then what you want to do, it depends on if you want to just turn the timer off and then you can start it up again later, or if you want to like, you know, reset it completely. If you wanted to turn it off, all you would need to do is get the uh, set HUD element enabled. You could just, if true, then turn it off. Or if you wanted to just reset it back, you like you want to just start the timer over again, you would just get one of these to set HUD element value again. Well, let's let's do that. All right, so now the way that I have it hooked up is that once this equals, once it gets to zero, it'll just restart the timer. And we'll sit here for a minute. And again, I do want to reiterate that this is for single player. If you wanted it to be for multiplayer, we're going to have to do some networking to make it so that everybody's timers are all synced up. I'm also going to show later how to make it so that the timer pops up as soon as the room starts. Like as soon as the room starts, it pops up and everybody has a timer start. And all right, we're back here and then we're back to five minutes and we've started again. You could also have a bool variable, like if you wanted it to completely stop before it starts again, let's do a bool variable right here and let's have it set to false. And then we're gonna put up another if chip in between this timer right here. And we're gonna have that so that once this thing goes off and it kind of resets the timer and everything, it actually stops the countdown until next time we want it, we want it to start up again. So let's clone it again and make it so that when you hit the button, it becomes true. 
right? All right, so now we have the countdown, it reset. I stopped it because this is false now. But if I hit true, it's gonna set it back to five minutes and then it's gonna set this to true. This is gonna allow this 30 hertz receiver to go through and then make our one, our, our countdown start again. But there we go. Okay, so now we kinda wanna make it work for multiplayer. And the issue with that is that we need the signal, the timer essentially to only run on the room authority players like system so that it can keep track for everybody and then send the signals out to everybody else essentially. So again, we're gonna keep with the button. So with this, it's, it's a little bit different. What we're gonna have to do is make some custom events. See right now when you hit this, it only runs locally. And again, that's why it's only working for single player. You hit this button on the person who hit the button on their system, their element has popped up on the screen their element is set to or set to five minutes and then their their thing starts counting but not for everybody else if you want it to be synced we have to do some some networking so we're going to start that out with a event definition and i'm just going to stick them on on this wall over here so we can keep track so our first event that we're doing is essentially going to send out the signal to the room authority to start the countdown so i'm going to name this start timer RA for start timer of the room authority. All right, and then we're gonna go over here where our initial initial stuff is and get an event sender. Configure that to our new event, which is set rhyme. Send it to the room authority. Send that to the room authority. And you might have to make some conditions, like put some ifs in here, like only let this button be hit if the room or if the game hasn't already started or something like that and then we're going to get an event receiver and configure it to that same event start timer ra so we're starting the timer for the room authority but we still want to start the hud element and everything for everybody else so we're actually going to make another custom event or get another event definition whatever all right and so this one is going to be start timer for all we're gonna get an event sender and actually i'm just gonna clone this one down here clone that configure it to start timer for all send that to all all right and actually i'm gonna go ahead and work on this before we continue here so let's get another event receiver i guess i'll put it up here and configure it to the start timer for all what we want to do is hook up this set HUD element enabled to that. Since this is going out to everybody's system, everybody who's in the room, it'll now start their, their timer on the top of their screen. And we're going to go ahead and set it to 300 here. You could set it on the room authority system, but right now it's all going to start at 300. So it's fine. And then we want to take this bool, this thing that says, Hey, start counting down. We want to send that to the, just the room authority since that's over here. You also wanna make it a synced variable just in case the room authority switches. So not only that, we also need to make sure that this timer is only running for the room authority system. That one hertz invention from earlier, if we look inside of it, that's exactly what this does. It's got the exact same thing as earlier, but then we have if local player is room authority. So it's only running for the person who is the room authority. And that's what we're gonna do here. If player is room authority, if, and let's put it, I think I'll put it before this chip. So after that, let's see, if room authority, we hook that up to the if chip. So then on the room authority system, it'll start counting. It'll come in here, it'll do the integer variable thing. This now, because the integer variable will only be changing on the room authority system, this event receiver now becomes unsynced. It now only runs on the room authority system whenever this change, it doesn't go off for everybody. It'll start subtracting. Right now, this is only updating the room authority person's timer. We need to make it update everybody's timer. So we're gonna get another custom event. Just clone that. We're gonna call this one timer update all. Well, and it's all capitals for some reason. And this one, we're gonna give a property. We're gonna give time property, and that's gonna be an integer. So this is gonna be 
the time that we're actually sending out in the event. Let's do an event sender, configure that to our new event, which is update timer for all. We send this to all, then we wanna basically replace this. So we just hook that up there and then put that there. Okay, and then now this chip right here, this is what's gonna run and receive this new event. We also wanna, like I said, we wanna update whatever the new time is, so. And then we're gonna get the receiver for this event sender, and we'll configure it to that update for all. We're gonna have this go off for everybody. We're gonna have it update to whatever time comes through here. This now updates that timer for everybody. So everybody's screen should be on the exact same number. Still on the room authority system, we wanna to check to see, hey, you know, does it equal zero? If it has, then we need to, again, kind of send all of this stuff to all of the players. I guess we can just have the timer reset whenever, whenever that happens for everybody. So we would again make another event and we're just gonna do, actually, you know what we'll do? We'll do stop timer. Let's just stop the timer for everybody. So stop timer, we do the same thing. We're gonna get an event receiver, or sorry, an event sender, event receiver, configure this to our new stop timer all, send it to all, hook that up, so that, and then we configure our event receiver to stop timer all. We need the set HUD element enabled. So we're gonna turn that to false, go ahead and hook this up, oops, hook this up, hook this up, all right, and then also on the room authority system, let's go ahead and stop the timer. So we're just gonna hook up this bull so that it, it's it's not timing when there's no need to. It's a I know it looks a little bit confusing <laughs> because I'm not very good at organizing in the moment, but let's just run through it real quick so you make sure you understand. So there's 10 people in the room. You have some condition that like, oh, 10 people need to be in the room before you can hit this button, whatever you wanna put right here in between, okay? Hit the button to start the timer. It goes onto the room authority system and it says, hey, start the timer, send this event out to everybody so that everybody can now see the timer and their timer is set to five minutes. Then change this bool, which is synced for everybody, but it's only happening on the room authority system. Set this to true so that it can then go through here and start doing the countdown. Then on the room authority, we have it start doing the countdown, start subtracting time. And every time that it subtracts, it goes through here and updates the timer for everybody, not just the room authority. That's what this event does. It also on the room authority system is gonna check, hey, how low is this? What is the time? Is it zero yet? If it does equal zero, then we have another event sending out to everybody, hey, go ahead and stop this timer. And then also this bool variable changing it so that, hey, just stop doing, stop doing the countdown altogether. And I can get on my alt account and like, show that it's working for everybody. I do wanna show if you want the timer to start like as soon as somebody enters the room, like as soon as the room is loaded, you want the timer to start. So for this, we need an event receiver. We're gonna set that to when room loaded. You remember earlier when I said, you know, go ahead and have the, the element active like as soon as somebody joins. We still wanna have that, that there from earlier. But this time we actually need to set what it is when they join the room. So we're gonna clone this one as well. Put that down here. Have it go ahead and set the time to whatever the current time is. And we're gonna find that out by using our event we already made, which was the event sender timer update all. We're gonna grab another event receiver for that. The cool thing about this, and I didn't learn this until like maybe a week ago, is that even if you don't use these, even if you're not using the execution, this time here will still update. So it'll still be synced across everybody, which is cool. We can just hook that up so that when they join, it sets their HUD up and the HUD is automatically, you know, gonna be synced to whatever the time people already have. Now, even though this kind of takes care of that people joining, you still have to do the initial, when the first person joins, start the timer. So what we want to do here is actually send this event, the time time update all. We want to go ahead and send this timer update all to everybody so that it's set to 300 for everybody as soon as they join the room. And we also want to go ahead and start that countdown 
with the bool variable. So let's move that there. Now in testing, when I did test this out, this actually gives you some sort of like overload, like doesn't like it doesn't actually work. You have to give the system a little bit of time in order to catch up. So for that, you just use a delay. Let's just do a one second delay. I mean, it's just like when the room first loaded, so it's not that big a deal. And now if I save the room and come back, you'll see that immediately the timer starts. And because this is true, it's gonna automatically start counting down everything. But as soon as we load in, you should see the timer immediately starts. If you wanna learn about circuits, check this video out here. If you wanna be entertained, check this video out here. If you're in the 9%, put a snake emoji in the comments. RCL man is dead.